Hey guys, I'm Tammy and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to sew a sheared summer dress out of some gingham fabric. I thought I'd film a cute tutorial on how I sew this dress. It's going to be really easy and very beginner friendly and if you've never sewn with shearing before, this is definitely the video for you. I'm going to be using this yellow cotton fabric for this dress. It has a really lovely gingham texture and as you can see it has these really lovely adorable embroidered flowers on. I really love the look of this fabric. It feels perfect for summer. To make this dress, I definitely recommend using a really easy fabric like cotton it'll be really easy to sew the shearing onto. Once you've chosen your fabric you're going to want to cut out the main dress fabric. I've added the measurements for the pattern piece on screen but you just need to measure your full bust and times this number by 1.5 to get the width of the pattern piece. Mine is 49.5 inches and then I wanted this to hit near my knee so I made the length 32 inches. For the skirt ruffle, you just need to times that previous number we calculated, which was 49.5, and times this number by 1.5. For me, that is 74.25. Because the roller fabric isn't that wide, we need to half this number twice to cut the fabric on the fold, which I've shared how to do on screen. For the shoulder straps, you want to take the elastic and wrap it around where you want it to sit and pull it slightly tight. The length of this for me was 12 inches and then I timed this number by two to get the width of the shoulder strap piece. You can make this as thin or as thick as you like, but I made the height of mine 2.5 inches. So I have all my pattern pieces cut out. This is actually the main section of the dress. So this is 50 inches wide and 32 inches high. As you can see, it's a really big rectangle. And we're basically just going to shear this down so it's gonna be practically half the size and it will be really nice and fitted to our body. So the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is take the main section of the dress and we're going to fold the entire top edge down by half an inch towards the wrong side and again by half an inch and stitch that along the entire width of the top. So I've just gone ahead and hemmed the top of the dress. This is what it looks like. As you can see, that's the front. And then the back looks like this and it's nicely sewn down. So you have to do that for the entire top hem of the dress. As you can see, it's quite a large piece of fabric. But once you've done that, now it's time to sew the shearing. If I just show you, you can see there's lots of different rows already for you to follow the lines when you're shearing the fabric. And this just means instead of having to draw lines onto the fabric, you've already got something to follow as you sew the lines of shearing. So to shear fabric, you're basically going to want to use elastic thread that looks like this. As you can see, this one is white and it's really stretchy if I pull it. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually wind this by hand on your bobbin. I've already been playing with different shearing projects this week, which is why I already have one wound, but this is what it looks like. And I literally just got the thread and just wound it by hand manually and made sure I didn't do it too tight or too loose. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to put in the bobbin of your machine. Now, as I mentioned before, gingham fabric naturally has lines that you can literally follow when you're sewing your lines of shearing. I'm probably gonna do around 15 lines of shearing, but I'm not gonna do one every row. I'm probably gonna do one, maybe leave two rows and do another, leave two rows and do another. So that just means there'll be a bit of a wider gap between my lines of shearing. So you wanna make sure that the right side of the fabric is facing up when you're putting it on the machine. So as I was just sewing the shearing of the dress, the bobbin actually ran out of elastic and I just rewound the bobbin and I'm gonna show you how to restart a stitching line if you finish halfway through. So this is where I finished when the elastic on the bobbin ran out and I basically just did one back stitch, took it out and rewound the bobbin and put it back in. And now I'm just gonna start exactly where I finished and make sure I do two or three back stitches and continue along. Thank you. 
So I've just finished sharing the entire top section of the dress and this is what it looks like. If I just bring this close up, as you can see, this is the right side of the fabric with this really lovely shearing detail. And then the wrong side looks like this. And this is where you can actually see the elastic. This is what the whole piece looks like. I ended up sewing 12 lines of shearing on the top and then the bottom looks like this. As you can see, the top section has sheared really nicely and it's definitely smaller than the bottom. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is take this to our ironing board and we're gonna steam the sheared section and it will just help it wrinkle even further. So I've just ironed the entire sheared section and as you can see it's really helped tighten everything together. I honestly love the detail of this design. So to sew the side seam of the dress I'm literally just going to fold the dress with right sides together like this and there will just be one side seam along this edge. We're going to pin this and sew this using a half an inch seam allowance and then I'm also going to overlock the edge for a neat finish. This is optional, you could use a zigzag stitch instead but that will just help create a really nice finish. So this is what the dress is looking like now that I've sewn the side seam of the dress and I've overlocked it. I really love how it looks. It looks really, really adorable. You can totally just wear this dress as is now, but I'm going to add some really cute straps and also a gather tear at the bottom of the dress and I'll show you how to do that now. But I'm honestly obsessed with how this bodice is looking so far. It looks really, really cute. I just love the detail of the shearing and I am just obsessed with how it's looking. So to make the straps of the dress, we're going to take the long piece of rectangle that we already cut out, you should have two of these, and we're basically going to fold it in half with right sides together and sew along the long edge and turn it right side out. So using a safety pin at one end of the strap, I'm going to try and turn the strap right side out. So now I have two straps that are nicely sewn and pressed flat. What I'm going to do now is top stitch the entire edge of the strap because I want to create a bit of a casing for elastic to be able to feed through it. So when you're top stitching, you're just going to sew a line all along the edge of one side and then all along the edge of the other side. It will just make sure that when we insert elastic, it won't twist on itself. So to make these straps elasticated, I have this really thin elastic, I think it's one centimeter or three eighths of an inch wide. And what we're gonna do is actually try and put it against our shoulder. And while pulling it kind of taut, you kind of wanna measure exactly how much elastic you're gonna need. You don't want it to be super loose, you want it to be kind of tight and then cut that amount out of the elastic and make sure you have two for one for each strap. My measurement ended up being 12 inches long. And we're gonna pierce one end of the elastic with a safety pin, just like this. And then we're literally just gonna feed this through the whole entire strap. Just make sure you don't lose either end of the elastic. I'm just going to pin it in place at one end to make sure I don't lose it. So the elastic is now out of one end. As you can see, it should look something like this. We're just going to stitch both ends closed. So now the straps are sewn, this is what they look like. Just make sure they're not twisted. What we're gonna wanna do is try the dress on and see where you wanna place the straps. I normally like placing them in around four inches from the side seam 
and then connect them to the back. And what we're going to do is once you find where you want to place them, we're just going to place them on the wrong side of the dress and sew this in place so it will look nice and clean from the right side. So this is what the dress is looking like now that I've attached the straps to the top. And I'm really loving how cute it looks. What I'm going to do now is sew the ruffle for the bottom tier of the skirt. So now we're going to sew the ruffle of the dress and you should have two long rectangle pieces. And you're going to want to place them right sides together. And then we're going to sew along the side seam. So this is a side seam and this is a side seam. We're just going to sew with a half an inch seam allowance and then just finish the edges with an overlocker. So now that I've sewn the side seam of the ruffle piece, you'll see it's one big long circular piece. And what we're gonna wanna do now is sew a line of gathering stitches all the way along the top edge of the ruffle. You're gonna wanna make sure you use a really long stitch length to sew gathering stitches and you leave a nice long thread tail at the beginning and at the end of the stitch. We're not gonna back stitch when sewing this line of stitching. It's purely so we can then later on pull this and it will help gather the fabric to the hem of the skirt. So I've just sewn the line of gathering stitches and as you can see it's already slightly ruffled the fabric. What we're going to want to do now is pull either end of the gathering stitch, the bobbin part of the thread, and we're literally going to gather the fabric using our fingers and make it the same width as the hem of the skirt. So I've just pinned the ruffle to the hem of the skirt as you can see and what I'm going to do now is just sew this all the way around using a half an inch seam allowance and finish the raw edge using an overlocker. So we're just making sure the right side of the ruffle is facing the right side of the dress. As you can see if I lift that up the two right sides are facing and that's what it's meant to look like. So now the last step of this dress is literally just to hem the bottom of the ruffle exactly how we did the top of the dress. So we're going to fold the edge down by half an inch towards the wrong side and again by half an inch towards the wrong side and we're just going to press that in place all along the ruffle hem and stitch that in place. I've just hemmed the bottom of the dress and that is the whole dress completed. Let's see what it looks like on. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I sewed this really easy beginner friendly sheer dress. It's honestly one of my favorite things to make for summer. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna try shearing and if you found this tutorial helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you in the next one.